Good morning, men. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for His good pleasure. Indeed, God has been at work in our lives. He's been at work in my life. God brought me up in a home, a church, a Christian school, a Bible college that strongly infer, affirmed the inerrancy of Scripture. Was it a perfect home? No. It was broken by my mother's serial adultery, but one in which my father was committed to the Word of God. Was it a perfect church? No. Armenian in theology, fundamentalist in culture, but committed to the Word of God. Perfect school? No. It was a Christian school strongly that strongly denied lordship salvation. The Bible college I attended passionately decried Calvinism as an overreaction to the Reformation and as an excuse for intellectuals to not be evangelistic. But, I can honestly say that both of those schools affirm that the Bible was the inerrant word of God. Through this exposure to God's word, however imperfect, God saved me at an early age, placed me into the ministry as a teenager, brought me a godly wife, Tanya, to whom I've been married now for close to nine years. He's enabled me to gain much, he enabled me to gain much practical ministry experience uh, in home, in the home with my beautiful children and in churches in the past, preaching, praying, discipling, and overseeing. Things seemed great. God blessed beyond all I could hope for. My family was great. My wife was supportive. My kids were healthy. College for me was a success in that I made great friends. I enjoyed rich ministry experiences. Ministry was fruitful. I was in a, a great church in my former denomination. It was in my hometown. I couldn't have asked for anything better. Yet, something was off. Through eight years of painfully slow growth through Bible college and into my first four years of ministry, God the Holy Spirit was illuminating the Word for me in ways I had not yet known. Even though I always knew God's Word was the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God, it was becoming increasingly clear to me that I greatly misunderstood some of the greatest themes of Scripture, namely, the sovereignty of God, the sufficiency of Scripture, the power of the Gospel, and the priority of the local church. The more I learned about these things, the more I realized I needed to learn. God gave me a desire to be more clear about the changes that were taking place in my life and doctrine. I was convinced that I needed to take a step back from formal ministry and spend some time in focused training. But where? How? Where? As a separatist fundamentalist, I had no idea where to start. I was scared of liberalism and intellectualism. And so, I wanted somewhere that would elevate and not diminish my view of God. I wanted somewhere that would strengthen my growing commitment to historical grammatical study of the Bible. I was looking for somewhere that would expand my knowledge of the gospel, not gimmicks, being man's only hope of salvation. I wanted somewhere that would solidify my growing commitment to the local church, but I couldn't find all four of these things at any place, it seemed. Then the other question, how? Financial concerns? I was at a good church, but I was still a youth pastor. I didn't have a savings built up. Family concerns? I would have to leave my family four generations of people who have lived in the same county their entire life. Church concerns. I'd grown up in one denomination and I knew no one outside of that network. And to leave to go to seminary would be to, to leave that denomination inevitably. But God began to answer both of those questions, the where and the how, about four years ago. The short answer to the where was this. As I learned more about TMS, I realized that it had its view of Scripture right. And if it had the view of Scripture right, I knew that my theology would be right, my soteriology would be right, and my ecclesiology would be right. How? Well, there were a ton of issues to overcome, but the one that would probably resonate the most with you was the financial hurdle. I mean, I had a 
probably $2,000 in my checking account when we came here for seminary. But God had provided in so many ways. We stepped out on faith just knowing that this is what we needed to do and God provided. I will intentionally say these fast, but listen to this. I didn't have any money to get the, the cost of the move covered, yet I met some elders at T4G that year who were willing to help me out, and a couple of family members outside of my immediate family stepped up and said, we'll help. When I was running out of that $2,000 worth of savings that I had built up when I got here, I was looking for a job, couldn't find one, got lost in Valencia, got hired at a Chick-fil-A because I just happened to stop in and check in and see if they needed any help. My wife lost her transcription job. My first year here, it was 60% of our income. Immediately after that, I got a raise at Chick-fil-A and was hired as an apartment manager. I've ran out of my savings twice, and I've got a scholarship twice. An unplanned third child, help came from a church in Virginia. When I was running out of money for tuition, again, a scholarship came through an intern opportunity at the church. When my car died and I had to scrap it, a tax return bought a new car. Unplanned fourth child, I was hired full-time at, yeah, I know how it works. <laughs> I was hired full-time at a church a few months before the baby was born. This past year, cleaned out my retirement to finish what I needed to do at seminary, and unexpected tax refund came in. Every time God has provided. Now it's continuing the same way it began. With sovereign God working through His Word, my expectations have been exceeded. God has blessed richly. And in the future, I trust He'll continue to work. Now I'm serving as the membership pastor here at Grace, also overseeing an adult fellowship group here with some other leaders. And I'm seeking to accomplish some concrete things here in the church, but I know I won't be here forever. But beyond Grace, my next step would be to go back to the southeast where I'm from. I think that the southeastern United States is like a, the sleeping giant of evangelicalism. They're a priori committed to the inerrancy of Scripture, as I described, but they just don't know what it teaches. And so if they were just mobilized, if they just knew what, what this, this inerrant word said, great things would happen. So I would like to be that guy. So praise be to God who is at work in His people, both to will and to do of His good pleasure.